Hey guys, I'm just going to reach out to you one more time. Uh, it's probably going to be my last video for the RTV. Um, it's not exactly new anymore. It's going on two months old. I've had a chance to get a few hours uh, on the uh, hour meter and a couple miles on the odometer. And I just want to share a couple things with you. Um, I have some likes and I have some dislikes and I think everybody should know about these things uh, if you're going to go out and you're planning on buying one, whether it's brand new or used. Um, like I said before, generally speaking, I really like this. Uh, it, it really is a good work vehicle. Um, but let me just enumerate a couple of the dislikes that I came across since I've had it. And I know there's fixes for some of them and some of them you're going to have to deal with. Uh, and for the most part, you're going to have to deal with them because it's just the nature of the beast. And this is what you're getting when you buy one of these. Um, first, I need to say that um, the price is not something that I was very overly impressed with. Uh, I looked at these brand new in 2015, 2016, and the exact same model that I'm sitting in right now. Um, and it has the worksite tires as a camouflage, um, heating and air, that's standard, uh, spray and bed liner. This was $19,000, $20,000, um, just the way it sits right now. Um, I went to the dealer and you know, you can build these things online and that's what you're buying them for. There's no discounts to be had. And it was $26,000, $27,000. Um, you know, and then they charge you to put it together and shipping and, you know, all that nonsense. So you're into it for 28 grand. Um, that being said, you know, you could buy a Ford Lariat pickup truck F-150 loaded with everything probably back in the mid nineties for that kind of money. Now those things are a hundred thousand dollars. You know, just the price of everything has gone up and this is no exception by any means. Um, so that, that's one of the things I really wasn't too happy about, but it is what it is. Uh, the other thing, I have like four or five other things. The next thing that I that I want to tell you about, um, you've heard this all before, the tailgate latch. You need two hands to open the tailgate. If you're putting something in the tailgate, you got to put it down. You got to open the tailgate. You got to pick it up and then you put it in the bed and then you can latch the tailgate. That seems kind of silly, you know, because every pickup truck in the world has a single latch in the middle of the tailgate and this has two. Is it a game ender? No, it's not a game ender, but I absolutely think that they could have done better than that. Um, you heard it before, and I'm just telling you again. Um, one of the other things is the differential lock on this. My salesman told me, and when a salesman who sells these things on a regular basis tells you something, you kind of have to listen to him. You guys may disagree. You may have no issues whatsoever. He told me, don't use the diff lock. He says, if you use the diff lock and put your foot on a diff lock, he says, you may never get it out. He goes, and it's a, it's a hassle. You have to have the, the machine picked up or you have to trailer it back to the dealership. And it's something to do with, you know, how the gears sink. And, you know, he told me not to use the diff lock. He says, if you get stuck, put it in four wheel drive. So I haven't used the diff lock for that reason. I, I don't know whether anybody else has any input on that. If you do put it in the comments, um, I, I can't say whether it works or whether it doesn't work because I haven't tried it and I have no intention of trying it, you know, because I don't want to get my differential locked in and not be able to get it out. So I've used four wheel drive a couple of times. It works fine. Um, you know, so that, so that's, that's that. Uh, I touched on the speed. Um, and I've had a few comments on what I, mentioned about how the speed will drop down to 14, 15 miles an hour when I have nothing in the bed and I'm going up a slight incline. And everybody says the same thing. They say it may drop down to 14, 15 miles an hour, 
But if you had a thousand or 1500 pounds in the back, it would still drop down to 14, 15 miles per hour. It, it, it's a workhorse, you know, and everybody says, you know, you should appreciate that. You know, it'll continue to go right up that hill and you won't have any issues, you know, and that speaks volumes for the, for the uh, transmission that's in this thing. And I, I agree. I, I agree. But, you know, here again, let's go back to the price. I spent $28,000 on this thing. It, it shouldn't drop down to 15 miles an hour when I'm going up a slight hill and I have nothing in the back. Just maintain the speed. That's all. I, I, it, it's a personal opinion that I have about the machine. And, you know, and if you don't disagree, I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. I, I shouldn't lose that speed. Um, oh, okay. One of the other things, the shifter going between high and reverse. It doesn't sink well. You, you know, you, you, you bring it to a stop. I'm of the belief, you know, you, you bring a vehicle to a stop, you put your foot on the brake before you change gears. You know, automatic transmissions, you put your foot on the brake because otherwise it's going to roll, you know, and then you're going to get grinding gears and then, you know, something will break or whatever. But I, I'm of the belief you put your foot on the brake. I, I guess you don't really have to do that with this because the transmission will bring your vehicle to a stop. You don't really need the brakes, you know, to bring your vehicle to the stop. But when you're switching between high and reverse, you know, it just doesn't go into gear. And I find myself having to release the brake, you know, and sometimes you have to do this to get your vehicle to move, to get those gears to move just a tiny bit so you can get them to engage. Something that I found. It, it, I mean, a transmission should be, after all these years of building these things, it should be click, click, click. You know, it shouldn't be having to find that spot where those gears have to mesh and then put them into, you know, put them into a, put it into gear and then, and then you can go. That's annoying. To me, it's annoying. Um, and these are all little annoyances. There's nothing that I found that's really a big deal at this point, but it, they're, they're little annoyances. And the last thing that I'm going to touch on is if you look behind me, you see the screen that I put on. You got to have a screen. If you're going to throw stuff in the back, you throw firewood in the back. One of those pieces of firewood bounces off another piece of firewood and it goes through the window and you break a window. And Lord knows what Kubota would charge for that window because they charge so much for everything. So you buy the screen and that screen is probably uh, $75, $99 to make it, you know, and sell it if they sold it on eBay or if they sold it on Amazon, it would be great. That's how much it would cost. Kubota charges $325 for it. You have no choice. You got to buy it or you got to fabricate one. I, I'm not that good. I can't fabricate stuff like that. So I bought it. No big deal, right? I wanted it. I bought it. Now you have this little convex mirror mounted on the windshield and you're going down the road and you're trying to see if there's something coming up behind you. And that convex mirror, all it sees is the screen in the back window. It doesn't see anything through the screen at all. Unless it's at nighttime and the car is coming up behind you, it has high beams or it's, you know, headlights on. And then you can see, then you can see a car coming up behind you. But during the day, you can't see through the screen. You have to have side view mirrors. I don't know why Kubota doesn't put side view mirrors on these things. They make it an option and they're not cheap. And the next thing I'm going to get into is the difference in price between Kubota options and aftermarket options, aftermarket options. So I'm going to get into that and then you can listen to me rant about that. And then I'm going to be done because I still love this thing. And I still, uh, the way I've accessorized it, I, I, I think it's still a great vehicle. Um, so I'm done with the ranting on what I didn't like about it. 